Hello. Um, so we've had a few questions on how to do the spell effects that um, that it shows on the player tips video, where one of them casts a scorching ray and it does a fire beam and then an explosion. So we're going to learn how to do that. But before we get to that, you need to learn how to use macros. So that's what we're going to learn today. Okay, so we're back in our goblin dungeon with our dwarf cleric Grum, and we set up um, these basic uh, macros last time. And we did this by copying existing code and pasting it in, and it works just fine. So I'm going to teach you how, uh, an alternative way of doing this, and I'm not suggesting that this is the way that it should be done. It's simply a learning process that I think everybody needs to do before we move on to the other stuff. This will definitely help. So, we're going to create a macro that can attack. Um, and it's going to attack with a warhammer. And eventually it will ask whether or not we want to use it with one hands or with two hands. So, let's go. So go into the collections, which is the three lines with the dots. And you'll see the macros. So macro is basically a list of commands that is saved and activated whenever you press the macro. And um, the dex is cards. And we will look at how to use these later on. I think what we'll do is maybe create the deck of many things. And then we've got roll tables, and roll tables are exactly what they sound like. You see them in the book all the time, you know. Um, roll a d100 for the trinkets, for example. Um, picking character traits, that kind of thing. All those can be built in, so we'll look at that another time as well. But for now, macros. So click add macro, and we're going to call this um, Warhammer one-handed. Now when I put a space in, you'll see that it, it changes the space into a hyphen because we can't have a space in the name. So let's just start with roll 1d20 and we need to add in the proficiency and the strength. So I'm going to load up Grum's character sheet and we can see over here that his proficiency bonus is 2 and his strength is 2. So we're going to do plus 2 plus two, or you could do a plus four, whatever you're happy with. And this is a one-handed attack, so a one-handed Warhammer attack does uh, 1d8 bludgeoning damage plus strength, which is two. And now if I test this attack now, so I'll move back into the chat box on the right-hand side and test this macro. It rolls two dice, it rolls them at the same time, there's the attack. And there's the damage that follows. And you can see it's, it's told us that it's bludgeoning damage. Okay. So we also need now a two-handed attack. And this works exactly the same way. So I'm going to save the changes on that one. I'm going to go back into adding a new macro. And Warhammer 2H. Two-handed. And for this one, it is roll 1d20 plus 2 plus 2. And roll 1d10 this time plus 2. Bludgeon it. Again, I'm going to test this out. Alright, cool. It's working. So, we could now go, and if we wanted to, to choose these... Um, we've got a couple of ways of doing this. The first way we could do this is we can put this in the bar. So let me just close down the character sheet. So if we've got, we look on back over here on the right hand side, in bar, and the minute I click that it pops up down at the bottom, and I can do that at any time, and it'll roll again. There we go. I could do that with one or both of them. Um, another way that we can do it is in the actual description and edit macro itself, you can put show as token action save changes. What that will do is every time we select a token, doesn't matter which token it is, it will be available. Now that's not necessarily right either. So if we add it at the bottom, it's always there, which can help. Um, if we put it on token, then it's on all tokens. But we only want it to be on Grum. So if we go over to his attributes and abilities where we'd previously created um, the Warhammer attack using the other method, we're going to go add I'm going to change this and I'm going to call it attack and I'm going to put in here hashtag and the minute I put a hashtag in it shows up macros that we've already made 
So I'm going to put the one-handed in there. And now I'm going to click Show's Token Action, and this time it will only show on Grum. It doesn't show on the others. And, you know, when we launch that attack, it does the one-handed attack with the 1d8 bludgeon in damage. Okay, so the problem we've got right now with this is that as he gets stronger and levels up, his attacks are going to do different amounts of damage. And we don't want to come in and edit this each and every time. So we're going to open the macro again. We're going to open the character sheet again. And we're going to use a variable. So a variable is a pocket where information is stored. And every time we list the variable, we are saying go into that pocket and find the information there and use that information. And that information can change. Um, so this makes it easier and it means that we can use the variable so that we don't have to update this again. So I'm going to delete these. We're still going to use the plus sign, so it's roll 1d20 plus. But this time, we're going to tell it to use the selected token. So we use at to say we're about to use a variable. And open the curly brackets, uh, which are above your square brackets. And write selected. And that's going to say this variable belongs to the selected token. And put a line break in, which is just next to your left shift. Um, and the, the variable that we want first is the proficiency bonus. Now if we go to the character sheet and hover over the proficiency bonus, um, not over where it says proficiency bonus, but the actual number, it tells us the variable is PB. So it's at, and then in curly brackets, PB. So back to our macro, we're going to write P, B, and then close the curly brackets. We also need to add the strength. So again, at, plus sign first, then at, open curly brackets, selected, line break, and then we want strength modifier, which is at strength underscore mod. So we just need to write strength underscore mod and close the curly brackets. And then in the bludgeoning, uh, the actual attack before bludgeoning, we want plus, and then we need to again open curly brackets and selected line break strength underscore mod. Close the curly brackets. Now we should get the same result as what we've seen on the others, so we're going to test it. There we go. So it's added the same thing. So you can see here that Grum rolls. That's just that's a bit messy from all the others. Let me just clear the chat log and do that again so we can see it clearly. And then we'll break down exactly what we're seeing. Rolling 1d20 plus 2 plus 2, which is right, because it's plus our proficiency bonus is 2 and our strength is 2. And then roll 1d8 plus the strength 2 and it's telling us it's bludgeoning. Okay. Now if we use two-handed attack, we've got this here, and we'd need to change that to use the variables, but actually we don't need to do that. There's a, an easier way. And that easier way is like this. So, we need to start by, we're always going to roll 1d20. But then we might do a second um, two-handed attack, sorry, a two-handed attack instead of a one-handed attack. So we need to ask a question, and we do this by doing a question mark. So underneath the roll to attack, question mark, open curly brackets, and then we'll put the name of the question. So I'm going to put, um, what shall we call this? How many hands? Which attack? Let's have which attack. And then we have a line break. And then we're going to put in one-handed. After one-handed, we're going to do a comma and a space. And then this is where we'd put the result in. And the result of the question, if we choose one-handed, is to use this roll. And we only want the roll. Um, so after the roll, when it gets to the plus, we are going to put a line break in and then we're going to do the next question and the next question is is it two-handed 
and if we do comma space slash roll 1d10 and then we're going to close it at that point so let's just have a look at what we've done there again so we're saying roll 1d20 add your proficiency bonus of the selected token add the strength of the selected token then ask us is it a one-handed attack or a two-handed attack if it's a one-handed attack use roll 1d20 at uh, 1d8 if it's a two-handed attack use roll 1d10 and then whichever roll you use add the selected strength modifier and call it bludgeoning so let's test that macro out. so there we go it's popped up and you can see it's not actually rolled yet and the reason for that is because it has a, a turn order um, and this is the the order in which the commands from a macro are done and the question is higher than the rules, so it asks the question first. And this is to avoid players changing it last minute, I think, but it could also just be a programming issue. So let's try the two-handed we're doing when we use the effects. Um, take some time to look at that. Otherwise, move straight on to the video. Next video. Thanks.